This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. Okay, time to begin the career mode. The game tells us to go to the Sunday Cup in the novice mode. As I mentioned before, I don't like the fact that this is streamlined, so fuck you game, I do what I do whatever the fuck I want. Instead, we're gonna begin by going to the Ayrton Senna tribute. We're just jumping right into the deep end of the pool here. I'm gonna switch scenes real quick so you guys can read that. The Ayrton Senna tribute is a series of time trials and cars this racing great actually drove, allowing you to relive some of the legendary successes of his career. He earned bronze or better in the time trials in each chapter to view the slideshow and unlock the next chapter. So early childhood. From child or well early life. From childhood to the karting world championships. And uh, it gives you like a description on the left side, but I think they, they already you can already see that in the gallery or like the slideshow that plays. Whenever you click the time trial here, yes, exactly, Fabinator. That's why. So we're gonna have to drive his go kart at the Stow Circuit. So in 1960 to 1980, King of the Karting World, Ayrton Senna da Silva. This music's copyrighted, so I'm gonna read. Born on March 21st, 1960, Ayrton was the second child and eldest son of Milton and Nede. Nede, Nede. As a child, he was given the nickname Beko. I think that's a common Brazilian uh, nickname. I think Tony Kanan's kid's named Beko as well. His sister Vivienne remembers him as being a child who was always full of energy. As a young child, Senna was obsessed with driving. That's an adorable picture, by the way. When he was four years old, he was given a go-kart by his father. <laughs> God damn it, Reaper. <laughs> the chat's not up. By the time he was seven, he was driving commercial racing carts. It will probably disappear when I switch scenes back. His fascinating career began at the Interlagos Kart Track, where I'm assuming a lot of people's careers start in Brazil. He made his debut at the age of 13, winning his first race and setting a track record in the process. Senna was totally obsessed with his cart. He'd stay up all night tinkering with his setup. Ender says, my dad never gave me a cart. I fucking hate, I fucking hat you, dad. It was around the time that Senna started to seriously apply his, himself towards the mastering the art of driving in wet conditions. In 1974, Senna won the Sao Paulo Junior Championship. Exactly, Castro. The, are, are we, oh, the following year, 1975, he finished second in the Brazilian Championship. That's the point, Castro, to avoid the, the bot. In 1978, Senna moved to Europe, where competition in motorsport was at its most fierce. I think in the movie he mentioned... Fullerton is his rival. He joined one of the leading kart teams, DAP, based in Milan, Italy. The world of karting was blissfully free of any behind-the-scene politics. That's a badass photo, by the way. Senna once said that his time in kart racing was the happiest period of his life. I'm assuming that's a, a, yeah, something for most professional drivers. This is the DAP kart in which Senna contested the world championship. Look how simplistic that thing is. Like, hardly any, like bodywork or anything get behind the wheel and give it a spin and that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now you driven one of those carts the other day nice all right so i wonder how many attempts this is going to take us so it, the description says get behind the wheel of senna's dap cart where he drove at the world karting championship the green number 17 uh it gives like a background of um you know all the uh the specs and everything so we're at the Silverstone Stow Circuit. Silverstone, brand new to the series in GT6. Hopefully it comes back in the future, but we will see. Since it's an old-school go-kart, automatic transmission, turning TCS off because there's no traction control in go-karts, and I don't know how many attempts this will take us, but we'll find out now. You'd be so happy as Senna if we didn't have politics. I mean, that's the beauty of go-kart racing. By the way, second attempt. That's the beauty of kart racing, dude. It's just, like, for the most part, no politics and shit, and it's just... It's just all about the sport itself. So, second try. Um, we got the rust off with the stow circuit. And, yeah, let's just see how we can do. Okay, hairpin was definitely much better this time around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, guys. You're getting... Rally Selica, the amateur karting champion of Poland, worked up by using the letter C instead of the letter K. Although yesterday, you know, I was at the store and I was pushing my shopping cart spelled with a K, and I thought to myself, man, it'd be cool if I drive a go-kart spelled with a C. I 
Okay, that's a gold run. Yep, that's a gold run. There we go, only two tries. Nice. Not bad. Start of the easiest easy game. Shut up, Reaper. <laughs> Shut your damn mouth, sir. <laughs> so, 450 grand to start things off. And we've unlocked the Ayrton Senna DAP racing car and Ayrton Senna's 1980s go-kart suit, which... For the sake of the challenge, we're going to go and apply his suits, because why not? Our suit is just plain old white, you know, it's not really fun. So let's have some fun. And there it is. Senna's DAP racing cart from the World Championships. Quite nice, I'd say. Doesn't really matter if we get in it or not. Which, this would be a cool time to actually show off the um, the suits and stuff. So you can buy racing gear here at the tuning and maintenance shop. But since we've unlocked the Senna suit, we're going to go to our garage. Which, by the way, this is the garage. It's pretty streamlined in this game. Looks pretty nice, and I like the menu music. There's the racing car. It's pretty useless, so we're selling it for the money because we're going to buy a bunch of cars. I'm selling all those Santa Prize cars, by the way, because they're quite useless. Stockyard is like a storage area to put your cart, your cars away. It's a pretty dumb idea, in my opinion, but it is what it is. So, racing suits. We don't have a suit, I guess. Oh, that's right. Special outfits. That hurt your soul. <laughs> we all, like, whenever you get special suits, it's just a pe one piece. So, helmet and suit all together. So, there's Senna's suit from his go-kart days. And back to the tribute. And it's time for Chapter 2, from Formula Ford to F3. Why send a vibrating, though? <laughs> so, we go from the Stowe Circuit to Brands Hatch Indy, the 1980s layout. This game actually had 1980s layouts of circuits, like GT4 did with Fuji, for example, which is pretty neat. So, let's go check out our next slideshow. By the way, notifications are off and stuff for the slideshows and stuff because I don't want to interrupt it. Sorry. In 1981, Seta started driving in the Formula 4 1600 championships. Dude, look at those Formula 4s. It looks so cool. Being an entry-level category, the cars did not have much grip and were difficult to control. So, my friend Prescott Campbell raced in Lucas Oil Racing School and, like, they're similar cars. Senna came in fifth in his debut race and third in his second. And he mentioned the same thing. They're, like, tricky to drive. The best was yet to come, however. He secured his first victory in his third race and ended the season with 12 wins from 20 races. Holy shit, so that's like 60% of the of the wins then. The following year, Senate moved up to the Formula Ford 2000 category. So a little bit more arrow. His record in the Formula Ford 2000 championships was beyond reproach. 21 wins in 28 races. Holy fuck. Yo, regret. What's up, dude? In November 1982, Senna made his debut in a Formula 3 car. He revealed his genius to the world of racing when he won the race, setting a track record in the process. What race was that? I, I actually do wonder. As a result of his success, Senna was given a chance to drive in the 1983 British Formula 3 Championship. Which, for those who don't know, British F3 was like the place to go when you were a young driver back then. He had joined an up-and-coming up team called West Surrey Racing. His car combined with a chassis which exploited ground effects with a Toyota 2T-G engine. Senna learned a great deal about motor development and setup from driving this car. Senna was unstoppable in the first half of the season, achieving break to, uh, breathtaking speeds and racking up nine consecutive victories. I believe this rival was uh, Martin Brundle in this series? In the 10th race of Silverstone, however, Senna suffered a crash which badly affected his pace. Oof. Standing between Senna and the Formula 3 title was his great rival, Martin Brundle. There we go. It came down to the final race, where Senna displayed incredible concentration to claim the victory, and with it, the British Formula 3 Championship. The inaugural Macau Grand Prix, in which national Formula 3 champions from all over the world co competed against each other, was held in 1983. Senna secured victory in Macau, and thus became the first ever Formula 3 World Champion. Dude, Macau's a race I want to go to so bad as, a as I would say as a kid, at any, at any point in my life. And so, of course, now we have the opportunity to drive Ayrton Senna's Formula 3 car. So, Brands Hatch Indy, 1980s. Some of the corners are a bit more flat out. Like, actually, one, two. Turn three is, like, almost a flat left-hander. 
is not as tight as um, as it is now. So of course we gotta switch to manual transmission. And here we go. Let's see how many attempts it takes us to actually get that 43.14. One of the best sounding cars in GT6. But would he have beaten Lewis though? Yes, over revving a formula car. They love that. Attempt number two, by the way. Oh fuck. Macau in GT7 will be a nightmare, Castro, if that ever happens. I can see it now. All the top guys skipping Macau. All the mixed split people running it. All the, you know, the mixed split people trying to prove a point to the top split guys are going to, like, ram people out the way. And then be like, well, you were driving dirty first. Broke a lot later than in the previous attempt. I feel like we can go a lot tighter in this corner, too. I'm trying to steer like a go-kart, not trying to put too much input. That's a gold. Damn, everyone's talking about Senna being the greatest driver of all time. I just beat his time. Totally not in a racing game. Please, br br okay, look, no, nobody take me on the bus to Brazil, please, and then nobody kill me, please. Like, no Brazilians, please, like, don't don't go after me. I like Senna. I'm not saying I'm actually better than him. $950,000. And we've unlocked his uh, res Surrey Racing Formula 3 car. And, of course, his 1983 suit. So, as, as usual, we're going to go ahead and equip it. And sell his car because we need the we need the money. Because the car is actually worth a lot. I think it's worth like three hundred grand. Yes. <laughs> yes, Brazil bus. <laughs> Ronaldinho soccer. Yes, we need the money, Casserole. Because you, I'm gonna spoil this now for no one who for anyone who hasn't played GT6. They don't give you as many prize cars as they used to. They only give you like ten tops, I believe. Maybe like twenty. So let's go equip it, our new suit. That looks pretty cool. And then time to feel the, the tears of everybody rolling down their faces as we sell the good old F3 car and get all that cash so we can buy shit boxes throughout our playthrough. So now back to the tribute, one more chapter to go. The leap into Formula One from Tolman to Lotus. <laughs> I think Arthur's asleep. So there's two of them. Monza in the 80s, and then Brands Hatch in the 80s. The whole Grand Prix circuit. Monza in the 80s is really interesting because of the chicanes and stuff, and where some of the breaking points are, and then this... Oh my god, this is really crazy. But, let's go ahead and take a look at our next slideshow. A new lap record. Monza, 1985. Senna made his Formula 1 debut in 1984, representing the relatively new Tolman team. That's a happy boy. The rookie driver first made his presence felt at Monaco, the sixth Grand Prix of the season. In torrential rain, Senna qualified in 13th place, then drove like a man possessed, moving all the way up the field. Somewhere in the back of his mind must have been the days he spent racing his cart in the wet so many years previously. Dude, that is such a badass photo. Wow. Eventually, he made it to second place. He had the leader, Alain Prost, in his sights. Just before the most unexpected turnaround could have been completed, however, the race was stopped due to the rain. Senna could not help but cry at this devastating conclusion. Senna recorded his second podium finish of the season where he came third in the 10th race, the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. He celebrated by linking his arms with the great Nicky Lauda, who had won the race. Dude, that's such an iconic photo. Like, wow. In 1985, Senna transferred to the legendary Lotus Racing Team. That season, he would drive a Lotus 97T designed by Gerard Ducarouche. Am I pronouncing that right? Probably not. It, it was a distinctive jet black uh, color, I'm gonna say look, and fitted with the Renault V6 turbocharged engine. Senna's transfer to Lotus bore fruit almost immediately at the second race of the season, the Portuguese Grand Prix. It was here that Senna would achieve the first of his record-breaking 65 pole positions. Until uh, Hamilton nowadays. 
The rain was so bad that the race might as well have been held underwater, but Senna produced a repeat of his performance in Monaco the previous season. It was an overwhelming debut victory. He lapped every car from third place downwards and was over a minute ahead of his nearest rival. Senna had the same three goals in every race to secure pole position, to record the fastest lap, and to win. So basically a hat trick. Alright, Castro. He will prove to be extremely successful at the first of these, landing several pole positions in 85. Now it's your turn to see how your speed compares to Senna's. Can you beat the lap of 125.084 he said at Monza? I mean, I would say yes. Let's go. It's time to go at Monza. It's not Denny. Now it's the ninth time to charm. It's track limits that's killing me. Like the Vettel challenge in GT5, at least not in the original run. The run after we beat the game, like, we'll do the battle challenge at the end of this stream, by the way, just for fun. But, um, that wasn't so bad, at least nowadays. I feel like this is worse just because of the track limits. You barely go over the curb. The game doesn't like it. It's like Spawn iRacing or any track in FM7. Just a small lift through the second Lesmo. That was good. Imagine the Parabolica is like just a flat out final corner. Fucking hell, dude. That might have costed us our gold, but we're going to keep going anyways because this is the furthest we've actually gone. Thank you, by the way. Shut up, Denny. I did not. I did not cut the course. I didn't. It's bullshit. I did not cut it. I did not. 20 seconds. I mean, not 20 seconds. 5 seconds faster than Senna. I mean, Senna who? Damn. Dude, that save in freaking Ascari was insane. Oh my god. <laughs> One and a half million. So, because there's two challenges, they split up the prizes. <laughs> I don't think there will ever be a tribute like that, Beans. <laughs> Dude, that was pretty crazy. So, obviously, we're going to equip Senna's 85 suit to drive his 85 car. That would have been nice, Ender, but it would have been so exploitable. If I ever need to money grind because I want, I do want to use dumb cars that are expensive in this game, uh, we have the Red Bull 2014 championship at least. Back with the food. You missed um, you missed some craziness, Castro, which is here, by the way, the Red Bull X Challenges. You unlocked that for getting the IB license. So time for the final Ayrton Senna tribute uh, challenge. Brands Hatch Grand Prix 1980s and the final uh, slideshow. Binary with the subscription. Thank you so much, dude. How's it going, by the way, man? Hope you're doing all right. Thank you so much. Much love, dude. I really appreciate it. Here we go. So the miracle of super high-speed circuit. Of the, I should say. In 1985, Senna competed in the F1 World Championships for Lotus, the same team that his childhood hero, Jim Clark, had raced for. The age of telemetric monitoring in motorsport was just beginning. Nevertheless, Senna had a way of communicating with his car without the need for technology. Even though he has like something plugged to his helmet. Before going out onto the track, Senna would close his eyes, concentrate, and predict what his lap time was going to be. See ya, Ender. More often than not, he'd come, off, he'd come off the track having actually matched or beaten his predicted time. Senna would not trouble the podium for a long time after his maiden victory in Portugal. He was finally able to vent his frustration at the 13th Grand Prix of the season in Belgium. At Spa-Francorchamps, a circuit which, he, which would become one of his favorites, Senna once again proved 
that Rain was his ally. After starting second on the grid, Senna took the lead of the on the Irouche section of the track. Look at the lead he has. Senna managed to hold on and win a tough race despite having engine trouble. Remember when reliability was a thing, guys? In total, Senna recorded seven pole positions in the 1985 season, finished on the podium six times, and came fourth in the Drivers' Championship. In the second half of the 1985 season, he showed particularly impressive driving skills during the 14th race, held at Brands Hatch. During qualifying for that race, he smashed a lap record for winged cars. There were even those who said his record would never be beaten. Now it's our chance to see how much we can match up. Can we beat Senna's time with 107.16? One, I mean, 107.1 nice? I should have caught that earlier. Alright. Here we go. Time for the final of the Santa Challenges. I want to try to beat this on the first go, so I'm going to shut up. Run to that corner? Okay. This is not a uh, first time gold. Fuck. Oh, never mind! <laughs> um, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> um. I feel like that was really slow, but uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, I will take it. I felt like I really fucked that up. 1.7 million. We're already at 5 million and we just started the game. And we got the Lotus 97T, which is worth like 900,000, I want to say. You know what? For shits and giggles, let's go again. And if this is, the we're gonna do just one more run. If this is a failure, then we're just gonna, I'm gonna edit it out. But if it's not, then we're just keeping it, we're keeping it into the actual YouTube upload. Again, I'm gonna shut up and just try to go for it. Now that I actually know the circuit better. slower than the last time, but since I know the other corner is a lot better, we should be able to zoom past our ghost. There we go, a whole second faster. Very nice. <laughs> I just had to murder his time. <laughs> Where did that come from? I love his I love Mikazal's reaction to whenever like he was when he was doing that challenge, he just goes, I don't know, Lewis. <laughs> so here it is! Our silver clearance bonus? Alright. The Lotus 97T, we can either get it in the Team Lotus Special Livery or, um, Censored. 
doesn't really matter. We're selling this car anyways. To the cries of all the people who love 80s Formula 1. So, there is actually one more thing in the Senna um, tribute. We're not going to watch it because it's 20 minutes long and it it's on YouTube. You could find it. But it's the Legacy of a Hero, Ayrton's Wish. It's a really sweet 20-minute video about the institution and about, you know, its contributions to education and everything and, like, the poverty in Brazil. I really recommend looking it up on YouTube because it's really wonderful and it's really touching. So, like, yeah, we're not watching it here because it's, like I said, 20 minutes long, but... It's a really, really nice thing to watch. So, 900,000 gained. Sorry. So now we went from having like 11,000 or so to 5,941,200 credits. And there's our Ayrton Senna suit next to our Honda Fit with uh, three spoke rims. Very nice looking. So, um, Sunday Cup next? <laughs> 